Hey guys, today I'll show you a horror film named Laid to Rest Part 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a girl with amnesia waking up in a cramped space, unaware that she has been locked in a coffin. Desperate, she bangs on the box, trying to seek help. This frightens the mortician outside, who rushes away and locks the door behind him. The girl, now nicknamed Princess, finally struggles out of the coffin, but finds herself trapped with nowhere to run. In the end, she follows the escape route signs to the autopsy room, where she sees a phone on the wall. However, she has where she is when questioned by the police on the other end of the line. The officer tells her not to hang up, as they need 30 seconds to confirm her location. But Princess gets distracted by a corpse nearby, accidentally disconnecting the call. She lifts the sheet covering the body, and shudders at the sight of the gruesome scar on it. She quickly checks herself in the mirror to ensure she doesn't have similar injuries. After confirming she's fine, she checks the phone, but the line has gone dead. Panicking, Princess lifts the curtain to find a masked killer outside, whom she mistakes for a police officer. She desperately bangs on the door for help. The killer wears a chrome skull mask and has a camera mounted on his shoulder. Despite the pursuit outside, Princess leans against the wall and falls asleep. When she wakes up again, the mortician from earlier appears at the door, attempting to unlock it with a key to save Princess. But the masked killer suddenly appears, impaling the mortician with a steel rod. Princess is terrified, and as the killer searches for the keys, she quickly unlocks the door and pushes it open, causing the rod on the door to slam into the killer's head. She escapes and reaches the street, searching for help, and a car soon stops behind her. The driver is a bald man named Baldy who works nearby. He invites the disheveled girl into the car, but she not only doesn't know where she lives, but also can't remember her name. All she knows is that she needs to find the police. However, Baldy doesn't have enough gas to reach the town, so he takes her to his home instead. Baldy's hairy wife tries to comfort Princess and see if she can get any useful information from her. Unfortunately, Princess can only say simple phrases due to the panic. She doesn't know how she ended up there and only remembers that someone wants to hurt her. She wants to call the police, but this family has no phone. The wife makes her calm down and looks for help when daylight comes. However, the steel rod couldn't kill the killer. He injects a healing agent into his wound and reviews the footage of Princess's escape. Fast forwarding the video, he sees Baldi's car and immediately gets up. At this time, Princess finishes her bath and lies down on the couch, trying to recall anything related to her past. The wound on her head causes her pain, and perhaps her amnesia is linked to this injury. Baldi manages to comfort her and prepares to go to bed. Surprisingly, the bedroom door is locked from the inside. He tries to call his wife to open the door, but there's no response. Worried, he forcefully breaks down the door, only to see his wife being dragged out of the window, her head caught by the killer outside. While the killer viciously stabs his wife, Princess prevents Baldi from going to save her, drags him away to escape. They get in the car, running for their shitty lives. Soon after, the wife's brother arrives, following closely behind. He had seen Baldi bringing a strange girl home and came to warn his sister. They notice an unfamiliar car nearby, and the brother goes to investigate but finds no one inside. His girlfriend peers through the car window to ask what's going on. But before he can respond, a knife is thrust into his mouth, silencing him forever. The horrifying scene makes her scream desperately, but the masked killer starts playing a game with her. Seeing her reach for her phone, he stabs her fingers, the intense pain making her abandon the call. She pushes open the car door and runs towards her sister's house, but upon seeing the body hanging, she realizes there's nowhere left to hide. The killer reappears and slashes her body, causing her to collapse to the ground, screaming in a chicken voice. On the other hand, Baldi successfully escapes with Princess. He sobs uncontrollably for the loss of his wife. Princess encourages him to find a phone and call the police. They stop at a house with lights still on, where a man named Steven lives. Seeing Princess's urgency, he offers to email the police from his computer. After sending the email, he starts searching for information about the killer online. By combining some keywords, the killer's profile appears on the screen. Shockingly, the killer even sent his crime videos to the police. It shows that the latest case occurred in Miami, which suggests Princess might have gone missing there as well. Princess goes to the bathroom to wash up, but her excessive anxiety causes her to have hallucinations. She catches a glimpse of the killer's face in the mirror and leaves there in fear. 
Worried about their safety, Baldy suggests driving to the police station to report the situation. Stephen disagrees because he has to attend his mother's funeral the next day. Baldy warns him that if he stays behind, he might end up joining his mother in heaven. Feeling a chill down his spine, Stephen reluctantly agrees to leave with them. Upon arriving at the police station, they find some makeshift weapons and enter the building, unaware of the bloodstains on the police car parked outside. It seems the killer has arrived before them. The station is deserted and a walkie-talkie crackles to life with a police officer claiming he's locked in the bathroom. Everyone starts searching, but it turns out to be a trap set by the masked killer who is hiding in the shadows, watching everything unfold. He plans to pick them off one by one as they split up. Princess becomes fascinated by the view inside a jail cell, while Stephen cautiously sneaks into the bathroom, only to find it empty. The walkie-talkie still repeats the same message, making Baldy suspicious. Sure enough, the killer bursts through the door, brandishing his knife at Princess. Luckily, Baldy reacts in time, blocking the attack with his cane, and the trio starts running. However, Stephen lags behind. Unable to open the jail door, he watches the killer closing in. Princess bravely turns back to help him and together they manage to escape the police station. Back in the truck, Princess decides to return to Stephen's house and wait for the police. However, Baldy proposes leaving the area instead. Unfortunately, there's not enough gas in the truck. At a loss, Princess knocks on the window, asking Stephen to stop the car. She points to a distant building, explaining that she escaped from there and wants to go back there to search for the answers. They have no choice but to accompany her. Stephen, whose mother's funeral is being held at the funeral home, refuses to leave the truck. Baldy tells him to hide the vehicle behind the building to avoid revealing their location. So, Stephen parks the car next to a hearse, and a guttural roar resonates in his ears, sounding like his mother's voice. He becomes panicked and sees his mother slowly rising in the hearse. Terrified, he quickly follows Baldy into the building. Unbeknownst to him, the supernatural event was just a trick played by the masked killer. At this point, Baldy needs to bury his hairy wife before his cousin arrives at his home. However, Princess wants to stay. He decides to let them stay and returns after handling the situation at home. After Baldy leaves, Princess opens the door, intending to use their makeshift weapons for a final showdown with the killer. The pair arrive at a wooden cabin that seems to be the killer's hideout. To enter the cabin, Stephen distracts the killer while Princess seizes the opportunity to rush inside. However, the killer is only interested in Princess, completely ignoring Stephen who is frantically trying to draw his attention. The killer bursts into the cabin and locks the door behind him. Princess brandishes a small knife, pacing around the room, while the killer traces her smell, knowing she has no way out. He decides to put on a great performance for this lucky audience. There is a woman tied to a coffin who struggles relentlessly. Princess wants to cut the ropes and save her, but unfortunately, the killer has already approached her slowly. She throws the knife at him, but it only hits the chandelier above, not hurting the killer at all. The killer lifts his prey, and the dagger repeatedly slices her throat. Princess desperately bangs on the door for help. However, Stephen outside is also helpless. In the end, the killer comes up to replace the videotape and insert a tape labeled Miami. The tape shows the entire process of the killer abducting Princess. Princess is placed in a coffin again by the killer. This time, in order to observe her situation inside, the killer drills a hole in the coffin to place a camera. Later, Baldy comes to rescue Princess. After returning from his home with a gun, the two confidently storm into the wooden cabin. Baldy shoots the killer, who quickly disappears. The room is filled with coffins and they witness many horrific sights as they search. Eventually, they locate Princess. Baldy hurriedly uses a crowbar to open the coffin while Stephen reloads his gun. However, the bullets fall into the corpse inside the coffin, and he gives up trying to retrieve them after digging deeper into the mangled human remains. They do find a set of car keys, though. Stephen discovers a mobile phone in the car, but it requires a password to make calls. The three of them try many times to unlock it without success. They can only return to Stephen's home and seek help online. Meanwhile, the killer wakes up inside a coffin. Although shot in the abdomen, he is remarkably resilient, able to treat his wound and remove the bullet. With no backup arriving, the three have no choice but to flee. Before leaving, they prepare to find some tools in the car, but instead discover two dead bodies in the trunk. Baldy spots his hairy wife's body and sheds his crocodile tears. Princess sees the deceased mortician in the killer's video camera. It turns out he was the killer's accomplice. 
It's revealed that after the police investigated the area earlier, the accomplice wanted to let Princess go and stop his crime, but was killed by the killer. However, the camera shuts down due to low battery. Princess wants to see the rest of the footage, so she decides to find a store. The two people in the back of the car are dealing with the bodies, and Princess selfishly drives the car away when they leave. She follows the navigation to a supermarket for batteries. The two men have to walk. The killer remotely locks Princess in the car, so even if she reaches the supermarket, she cannot get out. She can only try to attract others' attention using the car horn, but unfortunately the store clerk doesn't hear it. She starts looking for tools and happens to find a card with a name written on it. Before she can figure out what it is, the phone suddenly rings. The greeting on the screen sends chills down her spine and sure enough, the killer appears nearby. He opens the car door, puts a camera on his shoulder, trying to record his masterpiece, but the device won't turn on. So he asks Princess to buy batteries at the supermarket and tells her that many people have died due to her foolishness, urging her not to harm others. Princess nods and is granted her freedom. Later, with the help of the cashier, she gets the tape, but the killer's text message is seen by the cashier, who realizes Princess is being threatened. He immediately raises his shotgun and goes outside. Princess wants to stop him, but is grabbed by two other young men who try to help her. Seeing the killer outside taking a gun from a box, one of the young men runs behind the counter to call the police, but it's already too late. The killer uses the cashier as a shield and decisively shoots with blood spilling over the glass door. The young man in white plans to leave through the back door, but a cold dagger against his neck instantly takes his life. Later, there's loud knocking at the front door, and Baldy and Steven appear. Princess quickly opens the door and lets everyone in. The reunion scene moves the young man in blue, and remembering that his partner hasn't returned, he rushes to the warehouse. But what awaits him is a floor covered in blood. The people in front are not shocked by this news. Baldy searches for weapons on the shelves, planning to hold out before the police arrive. Steven thinks the killer needs glue for his mask and replaces it in the killer's box with some toxic glue, which is highly corrosive and can burn skin. Princess sees a baseball bat on the wall and a familiar feeling emerges in her mind, but the store suddenly loses power and everyone nervously huddles together. A text message arrives on the phone on the counter, and Steven approaches to check it. Surprisingly, the killer emerges from behind and grabs him, forcing glue into his ear. Baldy immediately shoots, but it's too late. Steven's head is burst by the glue, and he collapses to the ground. The bullet fired by Baldy ricochets off the killer's mask, but the gun runs out of bullets soon. The killer gets humiliated and twirls his dagger, hoping to shave some hair off Baldy's bald head. The young man in blue brings the car, planning to help everyone escape, but someone must stall the killer. So Baldi tells Princess to run while he tackles the killer. Unfortunately, she can only scream like a chicken, wasting the best opportunity to escape. Seeing that she has nowhere to go, she turns and hides in a freezer, evading the killer with her petite figure. Princess shouts that she knows who the killer is, but he calmly sends her a text message in response. Do you know who you are? He places the camera inside the freezer, and through the narrow screen, Princess sees that the killer is one of her guests. The killer begins to break the glass. In the struggle, he loses his mask off his handsome face, making him feel shy like a little girl. So he searches for glue to reattach it, but the glue has been replaced by Steven. As soon as the glue touches his skin, it causes a severe reaction, making him peel off the chrome skull mask along with his skin. The killer collapses to the ground motionless. Seeing this, Princess grabs the baseball bat and strikes, splattering blood everywhere and ending the nightmare. Princess sobs on the body of Baldy who had been protecting her. In his pocket, she finds a missing person flyer with a girl who looks just like her. Unfortunately, the name is blurred and she still doesn't know who she is. Afterwards, she gets in the young man's car and leaves everything behind. As dawn breaks, they slowly drive away. The police finally arrive after they leave, but Princess has already arranged everything in a note. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.